Good evening. Welcome to the Billy Jones Show, a sports and fantasy sports show. It's Tuesday, April 2nd, and I'm your host, Billy Jones. One of my favorite things to do is collaborate with friends on Slow Drafts. It allows me to catch up and talk about sports with other brilliant minds. Tonight, I've got one of those friends who I've been collaborating with on some golf drafts on Underdog. Um, the majors, the Albatross, is a really cool tournament that they've got going, and I'm really excited to talk about tonight. Let's get going. LA. Hey. Tim, what's up? How are you doing? Not too bad. You really, uh, you caught me off guard when you said brilliant minds. I definitely weren't talking about me. At least I don't think so. <laughs> uh, well, uh, I think that you know golf. You de definitely are very plugged in. And uh, I appreciate that where you have a skill set that I don't have. And, and you're in an area that I'm not as focused in. So, um, yeah, it kind of just came to me. Um, but I do think it is fair that this space is something that you have a, a fair bit of knowledge in. No, and I, I would agree with what you said. It's kind of been fun just to do these slow drafts, right? It was like eight hour clicks at a time and mm -hmm. just kind of shooting the shit back and forth and, you know, going through the guys and picking these lineups. So, no, it's definitely been been a lot of a lot of fun. Yeah, and you're you're awesome because every time we end a draft, you're like, Okay, so 50k in the bag, we got it, and um, you're nice. like, "What am I going to do with it?" And I and I appreciate that energy because um, it's good. Like these drafts have a bit of dopamine that comes with them, right? Oh, I feel good about this click. Oh, we got to steal. So every time it's like this affirmation. So it's been a ton of fun. Um, I think we have like right now we've done like eight drafts. I feel like we got at least three in the top ten. So mm -hmm. money's yeah, as good as sure. <laughs> put it in the bank. Yeah, for sure. So as we said, we're here to draft a bit of golf. Let me bring up the tournament, um, share my screen. This is it. Nope, it's this one. Okay, so the tournament is the Albatross, Albatross on Underdog Fantasy. Um, $10 buy-in, potentially up to 150 entries that you could enter. We aren't going to do that many, but what it allows you to do is build out a portfolio of drafts um, up to 150, depending on how much you want to spend. Um, and then allows you to pick slow or fast draft. We're going to do a fast draft at the end of tonight, or you can do the slow drafts that we were referencing earlier. Those slow drafts start out at eight hour picks. They've moved down to four hour picks because we're getting closer to the tournament. And that's been great because we both work and uh, we'll have the pick come up. We'll both, I'll send a text to Tim, thinks on it, has whenever he has time, does it quick. Sometimes it is quick and it's like an immediate response, but um, it allows for us to kind of like, one, th let it breathe and think on it. And then two, uh, let, make that work with our life schedules. Um, the way the tournament breakdown is, um, $10 entry, total and half a million dollars in prizes that's pretty cool with a top prize of five uh fifty thousand dollars um pretty flat after that it does break down you got to be top 20 or so to be making um your money back if you're going to be max entering but you could come in one of these top 10 spots and be really really happy with your results um really pretty flat here um Continuing to move on. The way that it works is there are four rounds. Um, first round, each round being a, round, uh, a majors tournament. Um, first round being the Masters, second PGA, third US, um, fourth being the champion, uh, U the Open Championship. Um, and the way advancement works, and it's listed here, is there's two in two out of six in the first round, so really one out of three are your odds. Um, second round being one out of 10, third round being one out of six, and fourth round championship round being um, 310 person final. I think this is pretty noteworthy that the one out of 10 being the US Open, uh, no, being the PGA Championship, um, that's the hardest round of the tournament. 
I know that you were asking about that off the top. Yeah, right. Just because it, it's, you know, interesting. A lot of people who are deep into the analytics, you could go down some rabbit holes trying to figure this one out, right? Because the PGA Championship at Valhalla being probably the most important tournament to get into the money and then the Open Championship in that group of 310 to, at Royal Troon and, you know, trying to break through that group at the end. I'm sure there's a couple different scenarios you could work out there. but it Yeah, doesn't... for sure. Um, you mentioned the golf courses. Like, I, that's been very far out of my mind. I, I love that you've been thinking about those um, and you've got a little nuggets from different players who've done well. Um, do you have any thoughts about the golf courses? Well, yeah, I mean, for sure. So, I mean, starting off with the Masters, you know, this mm -hmm. is probably the only course where, like, past success leads to future success. So, you know, this one is very much a, if you drive it long and you get a wedge in, you know, we've seen Tiger do it in the past, you can score pretty well at the Masters, but you also got to be a player that can really kind of set to his convictions and you can't go after every single pin and make sure you're a good player. PGA Championship at Valhalla, you know, I, I don't know a ton about this course, to be honest, because I think the last time they played was like 2014. Um, I think Rory had won, but I did not get to see that. And then the U.S. Open, though, we actually went there this year uh, to the Miners. And, I mean, that course, it's a true Donald Ross course, right, where you have basically waste area on both sides and then the turtleback green. So, like – being a good bunker player, a good approach shot player, and a good putter is going to be absolutely critical there, which, you know, leads me to some people kind of like maybe like a Jordan Spieth or a Brian Harmon who did it at the Open Championship last year. And then the Open Championships at Royal Troon where Shane Lowry had won and back in, uh, back in Ireland. So that will be a pretty interesting test as well, see how he does again. But mm -hmm. what are the insight nuggets I got for you there? Yeah, I appreciate that, though. Um, continuing on the contest breakdown, um, scoring scoring is definitely unique. It's a points-based system. Um, you don't have to necessarily win the tournament to be one of the higher scorers. Um, but I think that one thing I've taken away is um, you need to be playing to be scoring. Pars are a positive, just scoring points. Um, getting volume in here, being live for all of the rounds, very important. Um, so we've looked at, we're going to look at some qualification stuff here in a moment, but also just being able to make cuts and then playing on the weekend is going to be important to driving scores. Um, and then we were joking, thing, go ahead. I was going to say, we were joking a little bit about it earlier, but like if you look at the point distribution, right, how much more important it is to be making like eagles and birdies than it is to maybe have a bogey here or there or a double bogey, you know, like a player like Jordan Spieth, who, I mean, he could have a scorecard and not have a single par, right, on any given mm -hmm. day and go minus two, and the good will outweigh the bad. So it, it's interesting. you got to kind of weigh those options when we're picking some of these players, you know, who can make mm -hmm. big numbers, who can go after a par five and two and put it close and maybe end up with a 10, you know, because a double bogey is only minus three, but – the guy can eagle on par fives he's getting 10 points that is so true yeah those guys that can that have it in their bag to get to that eagle right is something that we're looking for um and we'll be talking about that when we like make players pick selections for sure i wanted to do some data work around this um i found it very difficult just because to to like reverse engineer how players have been doing these bogey free rounds consecutive birdies consecutive bogeys i don't have that uh, hole by hole level data to, to like kind of build up uh, how people have done over the last and whatever. So I definitely, um, we have a friend who does, so I'm definitely going to start bugging him as we get into more seriously into these type of tournaments. Um, and then the, the roster is you're going to play six golfers each week and you're going to roster in total 10. So four put rock golfers on your bench and the best six scores will count towards your score. Um, so we're going to draft 10 players. There are six people um, drafts of 60 players are selected. There's a lot more than 60 names that are viable for this tournament. Um, but it is that's kind of like the player pool. So do a little, we have a put together a quick um, Google sheet 
to talk through today. Um, kind of pretty simple players here uh, listed with their ADP, so their average draft position. Um, we have the kind of put that into a round as well. We had previously, we we're just kind of chatting before the show, sorted it into projected points because um, we didn't really understand what that meant. Um, and we we're talking through that. And then we have um, some eligibility uh, notes here. Um, one thing I want to kind of start off with is the PJ Championship, I believe, has not released their um, eligibility requirements. So that's not marked yet. We can make some educated guesses um, based on who's won in the past and who where people kind of sit. But I don't have that on here. But we do have what people have qualified for currently on the other majors. And I think that is an interesting point because we have one right off the top, Ludwig Aberg, um, who has, he's qualified for the Masters and he's a stud, but he's not qualified in the, for the U.S. Open and the Open Championship. And I think that's interesting. Um, yeah. and I think yeah. he's one, though, we're just going to have to assume is going to be there because, you know, anytime his name gets brought up, right, other than people trying to pronounce it, because I think it's Oberg. Right. So, okay. <laughs> you know, I mean, it, nobody seems to get, be able to get it right, but the way everybody talks about him, there is no way he's not going to be playing in the U.S. Open in the Open this year. So if he mm -hmm. does that fall in our way or fall a little bit lower than there, we're, we're going to have to consider. Yeah. And he could he be his ranking be slightly low, or that's probably right based on like the just the names are stud, 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 stud. Yeah. But this concept becomes way more relevant when you look later in the, 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 the draft where you get guys who completely qualified so far versus some of the names completely next to names that have not qualified for anything. And um, just being able to have live golfers scoring us potential points is the it's a. It's more of like a disqualifier for us, or not to disqualifier. It's a slight bonus if we're comparing two got names. If one of them has all for the qualification and the other one doesn't, um, we've been going after those guys who are very clearly qualified. The, one of the names that you were just down there looking at, Taylor Gooch. Have you been mm -hmm. seeing the news on him and the, uh, you know, how all the majors are an asterisk because Taylor Gooch no. is a player? <laughs> so Taylor Gooch, he plays on the live tour now. He's had a pretty. He had a pretty unbelievable season last year, but he stunk on the PGA Tour. And he hasn't been able to qualify for anything because he's on the Live Tour. He's been making nonstop mm -hmm. about how, you know, if Rory wins the Masters this year, there's an asterisk on it because Taylor Boone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that's where, like, I think um, someone at work was, I was talking about this today, and um, he was saying that there's, you may see some Live golfers in, the like the qual very low level qualification tournaments like local qualification tournaments to get into some of these majors and it'd be kind of hilarious to have some a big time pro on a live type salary against the local amateurs we have friends that play in those type of tournaments oh 100 yeah um any other names here that you kind of wanted to call out or think that are interesting as we've been drafting I think, you know, as we've been drafting, it's it's been interesting how in different drafts certain names have kind of, I would say, fallen further than maybe you would have expected them to. But, you know, I feel like it's all dependent on, like we said, it's six-person drafts. So sometimes people are just kind of picking around people or maybe they're worried about injury. And, you know, we've done some drafts where we're like, all right, well, what's the max, right, highest risk, highest reward, you know, where we're taking Zalatoris, who just had the bad back. You know, we're taking Wyndham Clark, who's reported to now have potentially some back issues going on, but we know that the upside is there. So, you know, we'll have to see kind of how these first couple of rounds play out for us when we do this one. But, you know, it's, it's tons of different strategies we can take as like we're going through the draft board. You know, we've taken some more conservative approaches ones like most of these guys are going to end up in the top 20. We know they'll make the cut, but do they have the upside to win? And the answer has been probably no um in mm -hmm. some cases but no it's been uh it's been interesting to see how each of them played out yeah name we've been clicking a lot brian Harmon. we like every time especially two weeks ago he was sitting a whole he was in the late 30s and now he's crept up a bunch 
Um, that's a name that we've been liking to click. And you're right. The it's in, so I we've been seeing some players fall in drafts, and I think it's largely because people will look at the the, the news blurb in Underdog and it says, "Oh, Wyndham Clark hurt is back." And then I, I send it to you. I'm like, "You concerned about this?" You're like, "He had a great day yesterday." So I won't say that that is right. No. Nope. Noteworthy when looking at some of the underdog news in, in the app is uh, it's not always at least daily up to date, especially when we're going to see in golfers play four days in a row. They're going to pull the piece that is important, but are they going to follow up on it the next day? Um, I'm not sure. I'm not, maybe not always. So um, definitely a potential edge if you can get some of these players where they're falling because people are concerned with injury and there's not really much there. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna go over and jump into a draft. Um, see how long this will take to fill. Okay, we're waiting on one person, so that's good news. Um, you, you know, what we haven't gone in one of these drafts yet. That you know, be nice if it happens to us today. Is the first pick. I don't think we've secured yes. Scott in any of the drafts at this point. And it doesn't. It's not happening again. <laughs> it's not happening here. Um, they do like to say that time. when, yeah, when you are an influencer, which we are now, Tim. We are influencers. Um, yeah. We um, did the influencer 101 is a thing. Um, I don't know if we got that here. Well, we clearly didn't get that here. But maybe um, we can make it work from our, the spot we're in here. No, it was um, here. We can make. Yeah. It fifth pick isn't so bad and the reason that's the case is because there's so many really good golfers here it gives us access to potentially a, a brooks if a xander could fall in our lap victor hovland's great wyndham clark he's the name that we mentioned love um cantley morikawa zalatoris ludwig there's just so many names in this range that we can do we can build up we have a lot of options yeah no no yeah, absolutely. I'll be interested to see who falls to us on this one. Like Xander Shoffley, I mean, he's he's not a winner, but based on the way the point system goes, I mean, he does seem like a good pick, but he's not somebody that just, you know, is going to come win one of these tournaments. Or if he does, it'll be a massive breakthrough. I mean, his biggest wins at the Olympics right now, right? If he does, he's the type of guy who he's probably going to put up good scoring all four tournaments. Yes, like he's, yeah. he's, he's, and can't lay. And they, for whatever reason, you know, and I don't know if it's a personal thing, they just seem like the most boring guys of all time. They <laughs> influence on statistics, but whenever I see their names, I'm just like, eh. yeah, meh, don't want them. No. Um, we're up in one. We're up in one pick. Um, this is pretty good because we are going to be able to do this on the turn. Do you want to take Brooks? Um, yeah, I think that's a no-brainer. I mean, he's a major machine. Yeah, he is. He is one of these guys like your classic. Like, he is. No, he's the clutch gene. Like, it's a big tournament. It's a mega pri pool, prize pool. It's about the Barons A game. What what I what I'd be interested to see is he's playing in. We'll pick again here. I, I like Wyndham Clark at this position. I mean, even though that potential back news, which seems to be gone now, he's been playing unbelievable. And he plays through the injury here. Um, he yeah, he was spectacular on the Netflix series when they profiled him, just him talking about his mental health and how it wasn't in the right spot. And when he figured that out and was able to work with a specialist to get him right and like everything kind of trickled out, that was like just a beautiful story. So I like rooting for him. Well, then, um, the, and then the, I mean, what about, I mean, in the show, right? They show the two sides of the coin. They're like, all right, well, Wyndham Clark is seeking the help. He's doing the right things and comes up huge and wins a major. And then they turn it over to Joel Damon, who <laughs> same trauma, same stuff going on, refuses to seek the help and doesn't end up very good. But, you know, they obviously ended on a high note and Joel Damon had a great finish at the players the other week. So, you know, mm -hmm. for him, he's an awesome dude too, but. Yeah, Wyndham Clark is – he seems dialed in lately. I mean, if it wasn't for Scotty Scheffler, he'd have, you know, another – at least one more win this year. He won over at Pebble with that round of 60. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I think he can come through in the majors. He seems to show up in the big moments right now. So, we'll see. 
So this is interesting. We do have a draft full of badges. So Tim is not aware of the underdog world, but badges means those that do some level of high volume drafting. Um, I am not in the red badge level yet, but I will get there. Um, but it is. Uh, it's What's a red badge, badge mean? Red badge is just another higher tier of volume. I'm not sure. Highly experienced versus I'm experienced. Um, just signifies kind of level of player that you've been. Um, but I think this is interesting. I'm excited about this draft. It's moving a little slower right now, but we haven't done a fast draft together. We haven't done one yet at all. So we'll see kind of how this plays out. Um, if there's going to be anyone who there's any like panic around anyone um, or if it kind of just kind of falls in place naturally. Yeah, we're going to have to see. I should we'll see. Uh, go back to the player board. Or yeah. Up? We're see up in two. Like, yeah, I just want to see something. So we're up in two here. Right now we have a Wyndham Clark and Brooks Kepka. Kepka could definitely win at, you know, at any of the tournaments. Wyndham Clark, I like him for the early ones. And then coming up now, Neiman's been on like the hottest streak of his life, but he hasn't qualified for the U.S. Open yet, which is a little bit of a concern. Um, but I, he probably will make it through a qualifier, but he's, I mean, he won like the first three live tournaments. So, I want to hate taking yeah. him. We'll take him. And I think the the knowledge here is that, so the note was that he's qualified for the Masters, he's qualified for the U.S., going to make a strong effort to be in the PGA. No, other, and, way, other way around. He's in the PGA. He's got to uh, He's in the PGA. That's So um, we'll talk about it after. We'll, I think we should be a little safer with some of our other picks. So Hideki's got a, has been hit battle on the back injury, so I don't know if I'd take him. And then, okay. DJ, I mean, DJ Bryson, take, Cam Young. Maybe just Harmon. take D, D Shambo. I mean, I feel like he's been hitting the ball pretty good lately, and I think he wants to kind of get his get himself back in that spotlight. So I don't hate the pick. Do not hate the pick. We should uh, in, before we wrap up our tournament portfolio. We should have fun with it and draft like a whole live team. <laughs> what? The live squad. Near, near the live. Yeah, we already have our Woo Factor team. Right um, now, we got, yeah, the Woo Factor. That team's nice, though. Yeah, that team is nice. That might be our best team. Yeah, that's what that was, turned out pretty well. Yeah. So, like, even here, we got right now, we got a uh, 75% live. Yeah. Um, but I don't hate it. I, I mean, honestly, like these guys, it'll be interesting to see how Brooks plays in Miami next week because they're playing at uh, Trump's course and then they're mm -hmm. going to Masters. And I feel like Brooks, the week before a major, shows up and then he's going to show up at the major. And if, you know, I, I would bet he's going to come top 10 in that tournament easily. I mean, there's what, only 50 something guys, but still, it'll be it's something to keep an eye on. Yeah, I like he's. When I the first series of the Netflix series, the first season, I didn't like Brooks. I felt like like the first way they profiled him, I was like, well, "He's a douche. Oh, he's such a <laughs> douchebag." <laughs> but, but, then, but then I'm like, "Oh, dude, like he's kind of cool, and I'd love to crush beers with him one time and just be like, you know, he's probably really cool to hang out with because he doesn't give a fuck." Yeah, but exactly. um, well, I mean, even I like. Do you see DJ's interviews? He's just like, yeah, I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> yeah, they're all like, yeah, I'm like a, a mega. Like, I was rich previously. I'm really rich now. Um, Let's see. Okay, Tom J M, Tom Kim. I know we like Tom Kim a little bit. We did, but I don't know. I mean, Sung J M. It seems like the right call. I mean, I know I haven't. We haven't picked him much. In some of these other drafts, but I feel like mm -hmm. he'll come through with a lot of points, so might as well just take him. This is yeah, going to be one of those teams that, like, I probably like the least in terms of who we end up drafting, drafting, and it's going to be probably our best team. Yeah, I just feel like that's yeah. the way things go. <laughs> so we're back on the clock. Um, um, Keegan, I feel like Keegan wants it, but he has not been playing the best, but. 
back-to-back missed cuts. It's not the type of news we're looking for. Yeah, I don't think we can take him. What about uh, what about Siwoo? Siwoo. Yeah. Got it in. See, this um, is both a quick draft that I don't think I was ready for. It's once you're good at it, it's like there's big edge to be had because people do or are doing what we're doing and trying to figure it out on the fly. How do I do this? In golf, you don't, there's no like team component, but in other sports, it's like if in hockey, for example, there's a goal and two assists allocated on every, pretty much most scores. So, and people are very fixed on the lines that they're playing on or most, they play with the same people pretty substantially power play. And then their first line, second line, so on. And so you want to like set up your teams so they're like triangulated correctly. So you have superstar and superstar and then complementary players that are getting in points with the superstar scoring like um, or or then you play like the opposite version of that when the superstar fails, but other people do well. Um, so like the team court level correlation, then it becomes this big like chess game of like who does else who do other people have and like where can I get them in later rounds? Um it's pretty cool when you're good at it. Yeah, it has a whole different element. So we're through six rounds. I'll do a quick recap. We went Brooks with the top, our top pick at number five, followed it up with Wyndham Clark, Joaquin Neiman at 17 with Bryson DeChambeau at 20, Sung J.M. and Si Woo Kim at 29 and 32. Pretty balanced team. Um, a lot of juice, a lot of upside. Like what we're doing, we're going, we're going big time upside. It feels like, mm-hmm. but you know, I feel like you got to do it. Yeah, we're trying to win the tournament. We're trying to get that twenty five thousand, fifty thousand. Not first or uh, last. Yeah, I love that. Um, and that's that's exactly how you kind of need to play these. Um, min cashing for seven dollars is not the goal. No, that's not what we want to do. And that's why we have like a small enough, uh, somewhat of a portfolio. We're back on the clock. So can you just check the – did Steven – click on Steven Yeager. Did he qualify for all of them? Because he is a bomber. and He I mean, qualified for the Masters, just, just the Masters. Masters. Right now. I like Rio. I know he's qualified for a lot. We have two picks coming around the corner. Let's do him as the safe one. Do you want Yeager? Do you want to go somewhere else? I can scroll down a little bit. Uh, I like Nap, but is it too early to take Nap? Can we get him in the next round? We have him at 55. Maybe able to get him. Probably will be able to get him. Yeah, why don't we leave him? Why don't we take, like, I mean, let's take Harris English. That's the safe bet. Okay. This probably. team needs could use a little safety. Yeah, he'll probably, like, make a cut. You know, he's not going to he's not gonna win anything, but mm-hmm. we get some points. And then if we can get Jake Nap who just has an absolute long ball coming off the corn fairy to him is, you know, he's just somebody to take a flyer on and hope for the best. The and nap is in the masters in the PGA too. Patrick Reed still being around. Like it's tough to judge like where these guys have been. I mean, this feels like our live squad. Do we just keep it that way? <laughs> um, this is pretty livy uh, right now. Um, just keep going and just grab Reed. I mean, What's the note on him say? Why has he dropped down so far? I feel like we took him the other day. and The note says that he's going to be in the Masters. Yeah, I just feel like we should take him. I just I don't believe any of the finishing lines at the live tournaments. I, I just don't think the guys care. I really don't. I think the majors come around and they care. But before that, they're just kind of mm-hmm. doing their thing. So, I mean, I would take Reed for sure. It's like a showcase um, for them. Do you want to take Reed or Nap? Which one? I would take Reed over Nap. He's just proven. Nap's just like, it's a, you know, could happen. Could come out of nowhere, but Reed's, Reed's done it before. Yeah, let's check. I know Reed is just in the Masters right now. Nap is in both. We'll have two more picks. Um, so we have options. And then so Reed's just in the Masters, so he hasn't qualified for either of the others. But if he but if he does good in the Masters, he will. Yeah. So I mean that's your risk, right? Yeah, let's go ahead and take him. Um 
it's fine and then if so we'll take nap on the turn and if not we'll take phil and this will be our live <laughs> well we might as well go full live though i mean you should like just take phil at this point phil almost wanted uh pinehurst back in the day came in second to um oh, it's going to me. but this, this is our live squad i mean that's that is what it is Who's this that? is our live squad we got we're pretty livy here one two was it three four we have five yeah let's see five out of ten two three four five yeah five out of ten it's not bad live, guys yeah and it's so this team's been pretty good it's a little different than what we've been doing there's some names that we haven't clicked i don't think we've clicked a harry english or harris english yet um we have not gotten onto some jm yet um but that's okay and i think it's a different experience to do this versus proactive be able to like check all of our data i think it'd be great if someone had an overlay for these golf tournaments that had the qualification sitting right there as the player but um that would I, be may nice. know, I, I may know some a, a company that does these tools i kind of work for one so um maybe i'll chat with them soon maybe talk to them see what you can do yeah maybe you'll, you'll see what we can do um not it's just we haven't talked about it but it's something that could be cool so that was our fifth completed we also have a couple in process um we'll get, look at the board see what happened real quick um let me zoom out a little bit actually better to look at it this way there we go can you see that I can see it okay so um what are your thoughts um any any team stand out to you that you like yeah i uh i like that number two team right you got rom thomas back in his hometown brian Harmon, who i've just been high on lately i mean mm -hmm. he's, he's been was playing well beginning of the year i feel like he's pretty consistent if you you know hear from any of the pga tour guys that talk about him they say you know when that guy's on he's on and i mean who knows what he can do shane lowry that's again the valhalla or not valhalla but royal troon he's already won at and he's going back there and he's had a good year right waste management he had a good tournament he had a good tournament the week after that he hasn't been able to close anything but he's been finishing up there pretty high jaeger it's the same thing i was saying i mean he's won for the first time this week but leading up to the masters to be on a run like that and then but you know ash k is he's a young guy but he's pretty consistent he's trying to work his way up i think he's probably in his early 20s maybe like 2021 20, um could come out of nowhere I, I mean i think i like that team the best between mm -hmm. that one and the first team you gotta are, love you gotta love scotty like that what you can get from that we were talked about at the top we're at the number five pick and what the back part of the draft gives you is like kind of two shots at some guys that probably belong in the first round brooks clark Hovland, Cantlay, Ludwig, like all kind of like make there's arguments to take them as your first pick. You can get two of them. But right. if you're in the one pick, you get Scotty Scheffler. And that just makes your team feel so good. <laughs> I mean, we haven't, we don't have one yet. So we're going to have to figure that out. We're going to have to, in the, in the upside with the Scotty Scheffler, Will Zalatoris combination is, is crazy because Will Zalatoris is his Augusta finishes are, incredible right his us open at uh at brookline when he was in boston you know if it wasn't for matt fitzpatrick when he came down and won it he just like performs in the at the toughest tournaments over and over again it's just is his back gonna hold up right after the surgery and everything that's gone on but if it does i mean that's a value pick he'd be a first he should be a first rounder if he was picking up where he left off you know a year or so ago yeah with me get myself getting older i i feel that when it's like my back hurts <laughs> one round of golf and i'm just like i just walk that round of golf and i'm like my, i'm like my my locked up for two days <laughs> the back fusion surgery yeah. Yeah, i need i need what zell Torres has got um, you're, gonna you're gonna get the tommy john and the back fusion <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> um well this was a really good draft another fun one um 
the tournament, as we said at the top, is only 30% filled. And we're going to definitely be coming in a little bit late now with filling out our portfolio. So we'll see a bunch of you in the draft rooms. But um, thank you all for attending. We had a ton of fun. And if you have any questions or thoughts or you want to kind of bounce ideas off of us, hit us in our DMs. Um, I'm here on SportsVizBJ. We also have Tim on Twitter at Chase and Zeros. That's in the description. Um, and yeah, this was a ton of fun. Thank you, Tim, for joining. And uh, we're going to sign off now. Of course, bud. Appreciate it. Thanks.